afternoon, folks. This is Kevin Smith from ProTrain, and I want to welcome you to our session. As you can see on your screen, we also have Betty Gardner, CEO for ProTrain, and I've got my director of marketing, Miss Stephanie Mason, listening in. Make sure we uh, we stay on cue here. We have close to 260 registrants the last time we looked at the numbers and we're not going to wait for all 260 to get here because not all 260 are going to wind up showing but we, this is recorded so we will make sure that everybody gets a copy of this so for those of you who have taken time out from your busy schedules to join us we want to we want to thank you we're going to go into uh, our charts now and hope to have a great presentation Today we're gonna to talk about certifications and how those certifications can help you to prepare for some of those best work from home careers and some of the trending careers that we think are important today, particularly what's going on with COVID-19 and the pandemic in our society. Some general housekeeping rules. First of all, this session is being recorded. The links for that recording and the PDF files for this presentation will be made available after the session. That way, whether you signed up for the session and couldn't make it or not, you're gonna get everything that we discuss here today. All attendees are automatically muted when joining we would ask that you use the Q&A box, which is located in the lower navigation bar in Zoom for any of your questions. And then we will get to the questions during the question and answer period at the end of the presentation. And Betty and I will answer as many of those as possible. If for some reason there is an unanswered question, we will make sure that those responses are passed out in writing at the time that we give everybody a copy of the presentation and the rendering of the recorded session. We would ask you also to take time out to post in social media using the hashtag, hashtag remote work, and obviously hashtag ProTrain. And we thank you all once again for, for being here today. This slide shows the things that we want to present to you today. We're going to have some brief introductions for Betty Gardner and myself. We're going to talk about this new norm and what COVID-19 and the pandemic have meant to our society, particularly in the education and the workforce arena. And why now more than ever, certifications are really critical to preparing yourself to get back into the workforce when things come back on board, or even if you're at work right now, to talk about the types of upskilling certifications that we see trending that will provide you even more job opportunities in the future. We realize that many of you who are on today's session are a combination of military spouses, as well as those who might not be military spouses who are very interested in work from home, jobs and how do you get skilled to take on that new work. And we're going to talk about how you research that work and what certifications are really critical now in doing that. And then we'll talk about some handy tools that you can use as well. So we're going to talk about some of the best work for home jobs that they say are out there right now. And then we're all going to also going to talk about some trending jobs that the Bureau of Labor Statistics are telling us in the next five to 10 years are really strong growth areas for potential employment. We're gonna show you some neat sample career guide information that Betty found right there in her home state that we wanna share with you because if it's in her, her home state of North Carolina, guess what? It's probably in your all home states, but some really neat tools that we think you'll enjoy watching today. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about learning how to work and learn from this new home bubble. I mean, everybody's been in it for at least the last 120 days, and we're gonna share some, some essential tips on how you work from this new home environment if you've not been doing that already. We're gonna give you some tips and tricks about daily wellness checks that you can do to make 
both your lifestyle and your work environment more productive and 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 not as stress producing on on you and the family we'll talk to you about some things you might want to consider for just keeping your sense of humor and calm in the day-to-day -day environment and then we will have q a at the end i'd like to first introduce my co-presenter on this session my ceo betty gardner Betty is the owner of ProTrain. She's the school director at ProTrain and, and is a proven leader in the field of education. She started ProTrain to aid those who desire to better themselves through education. Under Betty's inspired leadership, ProTrain is dedicated to providing quality educational services at a, an affordable cost and provide you, the learner, world-class training for your education to employment experience. Welcome, Ms. Betty. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that introduction. I, I also want to welcome everyone that's on our webinar. It's obvious that it's important to you either to learn how to uh, find an at-home work job from home. Uh, maybe you're thinking about career changing. And as Kevin said, we probably have uh, military spouses I actually saw one of our school partners on here, Kevin, so hey, Sharon. Um, and, you know, people who are just trying to figure out, you know, what's the next step? How do I work? Uh, what is my next step working through COVID? Will I be destined to work from home? Is that so bad? We'll figure it out today. Or do I want to work part time in the office and the rest of the time from home? Will my employer allow that? I think we're getting ready to see a lot of positive changes. I'm a firm believer that anytime an obstacle becomes in front of me, I try to see how I can make lemonade out of lemons. And I think we're doing that. And I think the United States and the entire world is figuring that out. And with that, I'd like to introduce pretty much my right arm of my organization, Kevin Smith. He is my chief operating officer at ProTrain. He is totally a proven multifunctional logistics manager. And you know, uh, in any organization, whether it be a school or any company that you work for, you gotta have logistics. You got to have that project leader. He has been a trainer and working with the military. He's 40 years of progressively responsible senior leadership. He is, and I, I thank you for your um, service, Kevin. He's a 30 year retired army colonel, combat veteran in Iraq. His superior leadership in every organization he has worked for and training skills has shown that he has proven achievements that find him well, especially now in his new journey, as you all are probably thinking about what your new journey will be. He has helped me grow ProTrain in the continuing education industry tremendously working with our, our leads, our students, our partners, and hopefully you who are joining in this call. But today we're here to talk about what can you think about working from home or part-time at home if that's what your desire is. Back to you, Kevin. Well, Miss Betty, I, I don't know if my head can fit in the screen after you blew it up with all those compliments, but I, I guess I better not mess this up. Okay, so to get us started, I just kind of like to know where are y'all coming from today to, to join us for this session? If you go down into the Q&A box, just Drop that down and, and just tell us where you're from. Just tell us your, your home state and we'll give that about 30 seconds or so while, while you're doing that so we see where you're all from. Um, for example, I'm sitting here working out of my home bubble in Chesterfield, Virginia, which is just south of Richmond. Betty is working her home bubble, which is in Raleigh, North Carolina. And Miss Stephanie, my marketing manager, is up in, in Michigan, okay? Uh, because ProTrain's virtual, we got 13 people working in 13 different virtual bubbles all over the United States from California all the way down to, to Virginia. So uh, be interesting to see what Betty tells me some of our, our, our uh, listeners are coming in from today. And I see that uh, quite a few of you are, are, are jumping on the chance to tell us where you're from. This is amazing. And, and let me say this before I tell you where everybody's from, Kevin. 
the first week of June, we hosted a, um, a live virtual conference, five days in a row, 16 different sessions. We had close to 900 people join, and of the 900 people uh, that could choose 16 sessions, we had over 3,800 people from all across. So let me tell you, Kevin, you're going to be amazed. Let me see here. I have to put my granny glasses on. California, Washington, Iowa, Colorado, New York, Columbia, South Carolina, Minnesota, Lexington, North Carolina, Washington, Raleigh, hey Raleigh, Colleen, Texas, Brooklyn, New York, New Jersey, another South Carolina, Oklahoma, another South Carolina, uh, one that says I'm proud I'm originally from North Carolina, but I'm currently in is that uh, Missouri, yeah. Another South Carolina, another South Carolina. Now let me go over to the chat box. That was the Q&A. North, we got, let me go to the top. Nebraska, South Carolina, you rock. Co Colorado, North Carolina, North Carolina. Love my homies. Uh, Illinois, Washington State. From Michigan, living in Germany right now. I bet you're a military spouse. Omaha, the question, the question oh. is, the question is, Kannst du Deutsch sprechen? Ich gehabt zwei Mal in Deutschland. That's, and I've been I've been there twice. Been there, done it. Got got the uh, got the passport stamp. I know you're having fun over there. Uh, Illinois, Washington State. Uh, the Michigan lady from that's from Germany. Omaha, Colleen again. Uh, we've got Washington, another Columbia, South Carolina, Fredericksburg, Virginia, Colorado, Virginia. We have returned staff to campus. Okay. okay. Um, I'd love to know which, which campus there. South Carolina, South Louisiana, South Carolina, Missouri, Alaska. Um, oh, and somebody wrote something in there to you. I think it says speak it Dutch. I think that was from the person. So I don't speak German, but I'm, I can try to interpret it. But a uh, big hand to all of you all. We are here to work together to try to have a great presentation. Type all your questions in the Q&A and we'll get to them. Uh, we're loving living in this virtual bubble. It's working for all of us. So back to you, Mr. Smith. Okay, well, here we go. A little bit about ProTrain. I trust there, there won't be a quiz afterwards. You won't have to memorize this, but I think it's important you know that we're a licensed proprietary school in our home state of North Carolina. Betty founded ProTrain back in 2004. We're obviously a small woman-owned business, 100% small woman-owned business. Uh, we provide a continuing education turnkey solution that, that I personally think sets us apart from any other provider that's out there. And you're probably asking, okay, why? What's, what's the difference? Well, the difference is there's no other provider out there that provides all three modalities of training. Some provide online, some provide only in classroom. ProTrain provides online, in classroom, and live virtual through live online instructor-led courses, which are really important right now in this pandemic bubble that we're living in because without teaching virtually, it's not gonna happen. We are a virtual company and we are absolutely proud to help individuals prepare for their future. We have had an A plus Better Business Bureau rating since we've been a Better Business Bureau partner in 2007. And in 2016, we actually won their Torch Award for Business Ethics in the Workplace. We're very proud of that. We're a military spouse employment partner. What does that mean? That means that we not only try to help partners educate spouses so they can get employed, but whenever possible, we try to hire military spouses as well. We have been in the My Career Advancement Account or My CAA program since the program started back in 2007. So we know the types of credential programs that help get spouses employment ready for their next job in a high demand portable skill so that no matter where they're at today or where, they're, where the service takes them tomorrow, they're still gonna be employment ready. So let's talk about 
what's going on with this new norm and, and COVID-19. This new norm has totally rewritten how the, the norm is for the work environment, your business travel across multiple industries, and, and all of that's being rewritten as the economy tries to reopen itself after being involved in, a, in, a, in one of the worst pandemics in history for over four months in duration. I was with a friend of mine over the weekend and he told me that he's in a large business and they have a lot of sales and marketing people and they've already saved over $530,000 of travel money that has not happened because everybody's doing their business from where? Just like we're doing right now, all virtual using Microsoft Office Teams, Zoom, uh, GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar. There's a number of different ways that people have had to quickly turn on a dime operationally to stay connected to their customers and their staff offices, work sites, and employee roles have now totally been reconfigured in a post-COVID-19 era. I listened to the CEO, for example, of Best Buy, brilliant young lady who told the Today Show that the world as we know it in a post-COVID-19 environment has totally changed. How people wanna shop has changed. I don't know about your neighborhood, but I can't look out my window at my house and not see every hour somebody from UPS, Amazon, FedEx, or all three of them in my driveway at the same time delivering something that, God love her, Mrs. Smith has ordered online because it's safer to do that than to go out and, and risk her security and her health. That is how America is gonna want to see itself at least for the foreseeable future not just in retail, but in education and in workforce development. So businesses right now are seeking ways to do what? To make work more remote, to allow more telecommuting to go on and be more permanent basis following COVID-19. So what does that mean to the average employee? It means we need to help educate those employees and those who want to become re-employed how to operate in this large transformation using the lessons that we see being learned every day. What does that mean in terms of the classroom? Well, old school was you sat down in the classroom and listened to an adjunct faculty member teach you a credential or maybe get a degree. Today, all that training is going on live virtually online with the instructor teaching just like I'm talking to you from the comforts of their own home office while you sit in the comfort of your own home. Good news is you're saving gas, probably saving on a babysitter as long as you can keep the kids quiet enough to, to, to learn and you're not coming out of your secure bubble. And so that is the way training is going to transform here at least for the foreseeable future. What does that mean in terms of, of the workforce? Well, we know that even prior to COVID-19, the Department of Defense ran some analytics and they told us that 24% of you military spouses who are out there were unemployed, 24%. Now, as you know, the economy was rocking and popping pretty well before this happened. High three point something percent unemployment rate. That means that military spouses were still unemployed six times higher than the national average. That last analytic was January of this year. There has been no new data posted since COVID-19 outbreak, but I dare say the numbers are probably not better at all. They're probably worse. So how do you get ready for this new world? this transformation, this work from home environment. You think about credentials, certifications. It is a certification or a credential that is gonna give any of you a competitive edge in a very cutthroat job market. When people start going back to work, 
everybody and their brother and sister are all going to be trying to buy for jobs at the same time. Well, how do you make your resume pop out versus the other? Well, I can tell you, if I'm looking at three resumes, the one that pops out is one that has the credential versus none at all. That shows employers that you've got heightened career advancement opportunities and aspirations. You've taken the extra time to get the credential that that job market considers you job ready and will want to employ you. It will absolutely increase your value to an employer, even if you're there trying to be maintained in employment. How do you make yourself more valuable? You get a credential in the work area that supports what you're doing. And we'll go into what some of those might be later in the presentation today. Of significant note is this caption that I've got at the bottom of the slide here. CollegeScorecard.ed told the Department of Education that if you looked at all the jobs that are open today, 65% of those jobs don't require any degree at all, not an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or a doctorate. But what they do require is a certification that means you have the credential that shows the employer you are job ready because you have the right certification in that skill set that the employer is looking for. When you have the credentials from the right, from the right uh, credentialing bodies that are recognized by industry, you know, for example, in the IT industry, something that looks like Microsoft or CompTIA or Cisco. In the medical industry, something that looks like NHA, AMCA, AHIMA. Those are all credentials that employers want to see on your resume that tells them what? You're job ready. Where do you go to start finding out about this next job you might want to be looking for? I found a great resource here, and you're, you're all going to get a copy of this slide, but if you don't want to wait till they come this week, jot down this URL. ONET Online. All you have to do is type in a job occupation, the occupation quick search guide, and it will tell you everything about that job. How many jobs there are currently, what the job forecasts are in the future, what is the average paying salary and where those jobs are at. We'll show an example of these as we get further in the presentation and I and Betty talk to you about some of the types of jobs that we think are the hot jobs right now in work from home or those jobs that are out there growing rapidly that you'll want to consider. But this is a great resource. Best work from home careers and more. You'll see here that there's a wide range of jobs that you can do from your home, ranging from medical to social media to business to planning, travel, at home childcare, writing skills, website development, even translators are in high demand and you can find jobs there. So let me show you a little bit about the data that we that we pulled up on these work from home careers. Each one of these has a short description about what they're about, and you'll get to read this more in detail when you get a copy of our slides. It shows you the average salary as well as the projected job openings. So the first one there, medical transcriptionist, about what they do just under 35K average salary across the nation and the job growth, 7,700 new jobs in the next 10 years. Social media strategist by comparison, a little bit less money than a medical transcriptionist, but look at the projected job openings, over 35,000 new jobs. The one on the bottom, bookkeeping administration, a little bit higher salary, over 40K. Look at the number, over 180,000 new jobs in the next 10 years. And you ask yourself, 
there can't be that many new businesses opening that need bookkeepers. That's not the case. The case is what? Baby boomers like Kevin and Betty are getting ready to retire. Were it not for the economy getting crazy a couple times, we probably would have been retired because our 401k is now our 101k. <laughs> yeah. But with that said, when the baby boomers get out, there's going to be this huge gap of talent and bookkeeping administration is definitely one of them. You don't have to travel to help people think about travel and tourism. And as the world starts to open up for more travel worldwide, travel agents are going to be in demand again. Just under $40,000 salary, just under 12,000 new jobs. Event planning. That could be anything from planning for organizations to be, say, like a wedding planner. Okay, Wedding planners make anywhere between forty-five dollars and $60,000 a year. The projected job openings in this field, just under 17,000. Sales and marketing is professionals, okay? The one thing I know about looking on sources like Indeed, Glassdoor, um, Jazz HR, and, and other search engines where you can look for jobs, when you look in any major place that you live, let's say, you know, the person in Nebraska, let's say you look up Omaha and say, okay, how many, how many IT jobs are there in Omaha? Okay, how about medical, medical care providers, okay? Pull up sales in Omaha. You're gonna be absolutely astounded at the thousands and thousands of jobs that are sales related that are going unfilled right now because everybody equates sales with being kind of like the, you know, the guy that rings your doorbell trying to sell you, you know, you know cosmetics or, 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 or the fuller brush man. Sales is on everything. That could be everything from a car to mutual funds, you, you name it. It's a wide variety of sales, okay? That's always going to be a job market that you can count on. And you can do it from home. Although there's not a lot of child care places open right now, there are some at-home child care jobs going on right now, provided that the care provider meets all the restrictions that the states have. A little bit under $25,000, but once again, look at the wow factor on how many jobs are opening up. Why? Because the average household has both mom and dad both needing to work to put a better way of life in front of their family, keep a roof over their heads, and provide for the, for the kids over almost 180,000 new jobs. Writing, every business has something that has to be written. Be it working for our digital content business or, or doing writing for magazines or digital website articles, there's a nice salary projected there and close to 13,000 new jobs. Website development, just under 70,000 and almost 15,000 jobs. And we talked earlier about a translator, okay? In this large melting pot of our American society, it is a known fact that Hispanics are going to become the majority of our nation. There are not enough people that can speak and read Spanish. Huge demand there. Another one, not listed, but it's coming around the bend very quick is what? Mandarin Chinese. I've got a nephew who just graduated from University of Wisconsin, international business degree with a, with a second degree in Mandarin Chinese. Why? Because of the economic growth with that partner in the future. I've done a lot of talking so far, so I'm going to hand things over to my counterpart, Miss Betty, and she's going to talk to you about some other top growing careers that we've been researching for you today. Miss Betty. I appreciate it, Kevin, and I appreciate everybody that's hanging in there with us. We did have one comment where we're going to get basically to the meat and potatoes instead of stop talking about ProTrain. I want to address that and just say thank you for your comment. I appreciate it. We wanted to establish the credibility of what we do as an organization and how we work with organizations, universities, and community colleges nationwide. And it falls right into this slide. Uh, we have to research the Bureau of Labor Statistics 
and work nationwide and worldwide in, in the area that people just like you live in and what's in demand where you live because What's in demand in the person that um, you know, was uh, living in Germany might not be the same thing that's in Columbia, South Carolina. So we wanted to establish credibility. So thank you for your patience on um, the person that had said that. And I do see some questions coming in and I will get to those. Uh, I'm not gonna read every one of these to you, but in addition to what Kevin was talking about, these are high in demand portable careers for military spouses or anyone else. And we're all living in a different world. Whether you're a military spouse or you're one of the 40 million people that just got unemployed, you're trying to figure out, what am I gonna do next? Um, is the company gonna open back up? Should I be afraid? Should I wear a mask? Um, do I wanna decide that I wanna try to get a work from home job? And that's what we're trying to explore today. What's best for you? And whoever, you know, whatever the company, whatever the school is, you need to be very honest with them about what your career goals are, what kind of person you are, how you best learn, how you best work. And we're gonna cover some of those things. So just take a look at some of these. We're gonna look at um, some statistics and we're gonna give, we're giving you the sources for everything that we have, because it's not just Betty saying it, it's the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So just take a look at this slide for just a moment. Now, Kevin, we're gonna go explore those um, uh, pages, so let's ride. So as you can see, there are many, I have to put my glasses on and off, I'm just you know, getting to that age. If you're not that age, you'll get there too. Um, you know, AutoCAD, why would I wanna do AutoCAD? Well, I might wanna go work at a, um, you know, a, a factory that designs cars. I might want to go work in construction and design buildings. There's all sorts of things. Every single company that's viable, I don't care what the company is, they've got to have somebody in accounting keeping track of the books because guess what? If you don't have black, then you're in the red. And when you go in the red for so long, you go away and you lose your job. So be part of the solution. We try to be a solution provider. Uh, Everybody needs a project manager. So, uh, because as a company, you need someone to lead the team. So you gotta have an, I always say, let's reverse engineer things. Figure out where I wanna be and how I'm gonna get there. And you gotta have that project manager to lead you. Decide if you wanna be that leader in an organization. And if you decide you wanna be that, we got a class for it. You can take it from anybody you want but the facts do not lie. It's uh, like CAPM, the Certified Associate in Project Management, it's 12%. It's much, much faster growing occupation in the United States than any other job. So we put the facts here. We've got the hyperlinks for you based on your personality, your desires for you to go see what you want. But I can tell you overall in the United States, top selling jobs are in IT, medical, and business. And Kevin alluded to the fact, it takes a special kind of person to be a salesperson. It really does, because not everybody's cut out for it. But sales is one of the top in-demand jobs, no matter where you go, no matter what time we are in our country. So IT, medical, business, sales. Figure out if that's what you want to be. Next slide, please. So now we go to, we're ending up on our IT. Your CompTIA pretty much is your foundation. So if you want in, more information about that, you can contact me and Kevin. Our contact information is at the end of the slide. You can go look it up here on the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Your choice, but lots of hot in-demand entry-level medical. Guess what? I'm a baby boomer. I'm old. A lot of older people are living longer. Thank you. But guess what? We may need more medicine. And so we have to go to the CVSs and the Walgreens. We have to go to the doctor. And guess what? They need, uh, the doctors need those aides, the technicians, the health record specialists. 
medical admins, medical assistants, billing and coding, because it's a business. We got to pay the bills, we got to keep track of the data, and we got to take care of the people. Just think about when you go to the doctor's office, there's a person that weighs you. There's a person that takes your height. There's a person that greets you. These are all specific jobs in the medical arena, just like the ones in IT that we talked about. Let's go on, Kevin. Uh, as we get older and we're living longer, we have aches and pains. Some of you are probably a lot younger than me, but my back hurts constantly. So let's have a personal fitness trainer uh, you know, that can help us be stronger, strengthen our muscles. The pharmacy tech. Uh, we have a national agreement with CVS and Walgreens, and they cannot hire enough pharmacy technicians because for people living longer that need to take these medicines, the pharmacists need help. And uh, it's booming nationwide. Even with COVID, they're still hiring pharmacy techs. I'm going to, I was not gonna click on every one of these for you guys. Um, we're gonna hone in on physical therapy, but I'm gonna talk about, you see human resources. If you have a company of any size, you need a human resources person to at least help you be able to help manage employee questions, issues. We've already talked about project management. Six Sigma, uh, especially in the manufacturing industry, you know, big business, you gotta have somebody to help you um, uh, weed out the fat, if you will, and make things very streamlined. But we're gonna take a look at physical therapy technician for a specific reason. And so Kevin's gonna go to that um, page for me. Okay, so every single link that we provided to you is, is to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, as you can see at the top. So that way you, can, you, you know I'm not just telling you something. I'm, I've already done the research and I'm providing you information. Just like the pharmacy tech that needs to be the assistant to the pharmacist, we have an overwhelming demand for physical therapy aid slash technicians. Some people call it aid, some people call it technicians. You will see currently there's 49,000 plus people enrolled. It, um, the average wage is $14 an hour, average annual wage 29, but according to the American Career Certification Association, AMCA, who we work with, they're a certifying body. Uh, because you need to keep training separate from uh, certifying bodies because it would be a conflict of interest. But they told us that there was an overwhelming demand in the next five years for physical therapy aid slash technicians. So we created a program for that. And uh, as an independent auditing body, they reviewed our content and said, yes, it does meet the needs for people that would take the class in order to get certified to be prepped for a job. So just keep in mind, employers are looking for people that come with credentials. It can be a work from home job, it can be a part-time work from home job, but what you need to do is decide who you wanna be. You need to decide what your interests are, what you're qualified for, and what you're willing to do to get that next job in-demand portable careers. Back to the slideshow, Kevin, please. And I couldn't research all states, so I researched my own home state here in North Carolina. I'm in Raleigh. So a great resource that I found, and I did verify that 2018 was the, la the latest data, uh, we go to nccareers.org, Kevin. And I just, I want you to look for your home state or wherever you plan to move to, wherever you're gonna call home for the time being. So um, if you scroll down just a bit, Kevin, please. And I'm not gonna open all these up because I'm not gonna waste your time because time is valuable. But um, if you'll hover over the first one, probably in your home state, you have some sort of information uh, you know, about career clusters, you know, making occupational decisions your career goal, your pathway, how do I get there? I mean, you can talk to the school of your choice and they can help you. 
you can go here and help yourself as well. There's organizations such as Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, WIOA. That's for unemployed and underemployed. There's the My Career Advancement Account for Military Spouses. There's the uh, Credential and Assistant Program for Active Duty Military. There's corporations that pay for their employees. There are people on this call that are probably unemployed and they're trying to figure out, do I do a loan? Do I do a payment plan? Do I do layaway? There may be some um, schools on here to, you know, figuring out how do I help my people figure out what to do next? We're all in it together. We're in it to win it together. And I sincerely mean that. Um, would not have been involved in education if I was not looking out for everybody's success, no matter who you are. So now we're going to go to occupational profiles. In your state, and especially if you're in North Carolina, you can go here, but find out the website that's similar to this, and you can explore a clearly written summary of, you know, the in-demand occupations. In North Carolina, it's over 550. I mean, there's probably something in there for someone. Interest profiler. I mean, this is at no charge to you people all over the world. I mean, even if you're not in North Carolina, go to this website. Find out what, based on who you are, what your interest is, what you might be best suited for. That's a no-brainer to me. It's no charge. And let me help figure out what I want to be in my next career or what I want my career to be, period. So we're gonna go now to star jobs. And again, you don't have to be from North Carolina to look at this, but this does tell you what's a star job in North Carolina. Uh, you know, what's the hot in demand portable careers? It's probably the same thing that might be in most of your states. So I would highly encourage you to research your own, take a test drive on this web website, if you will, and employment projections. You don't have to live in North Carolina to go look at this button. Explore long-term estimates of projected trends in occupational and industry employment. You don't want to take your time, switch a career into something that you're not going to get hired in, especially right now. I, I, I'm getting tired of people saying uncertain times. They're really certain now. The future has changed, and we need to embrace change, embrace it as an opportunity as to how we're going to live in it. Um, you know, again, I can't help where I work for. We've been virtual for 16 years, so it really hasn't affected how my employees are working from home in the bubble. We work and we learn from the bubble. I can tell you I picked this picture on perfect, uh, purpose because I literally work at my house. I'm a plant fanatic, and I have two kitty cats. So at any given time, I'm sitting at my desk with a one or two cats all around me, and my plants, and I do just fine for the last 16 years. I, if I can do it, you can do it. If it's something you've been doing, kudos. We might need to just find out what you're gonna do next. If you haven't done it and, you, and, and you've been going through anxiety about, oh my God, I'm not going to the office, how do I do this? Uh, how do I deal with my kids? Uh, I've got to keep them you know, uh, you know, uh, motivated and educated and entertained and how can I do my job and still everything else you can do it I assure you um, it's just a different mindset next slide mr. Smith so we're gonna go into a little bit about this I, I would think that most of you would think it's common sense so I'm just gonna be your friendly reminder on how individuals can successfully operate as remote individuals the one thing I want you to remember is communication if you're used to working in a brick-and-mortar building you're used to running down the hall to your teammate and they may be on the phone and you're like, tap, 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 got a minute. Well, really they didn't because they were on the phone. So let's learn how to do that remotely. So we communicate. Communication is like air. You got to pump it in, you got to pump it out, but everybody knows what's going on. We're going to go over some ways how we can do that because um, it's really not that hard. And for me to show my face, uh, believe me, I would probably be one of your hardest victims to say, let me show my face. Because for any females out there, you feel like you got to do your hair, you got to do your makeup, you got to look the best that you can. But you know, you males, all you do is take a shower, put a shirt on, and you're good to go. But it's a little bit more intense for us females. 
So, but communication is the key. Let's understand the ground rules. They're real simple. You've got a J-O-B for P-A-Y, or you're looking for one, and that's why you're on this session. But when you get that J-O-B for P-A-Y, make sure you put on your best professional attitude that you have because you are a professional and if you're working remotely whether you're showing your face or not you need to set a schedule does your employer pay you to work eight to five nine to five or are you salaried and it's you do the job until it's done just do it you know just like i'm talking to you right now Everybody that signed up for this session, you could be right here in my living room, all of us together, and yeah, I, I could probably squeeze you all in. I had an Elvis party here one time, and I'd be talking to you just like I am now. But you're not in the room that I'm in, but you really are. You're in my virtual room, and you're very welcome to be here. When you're doing your job, think the same way. Set that mindset that you're a professional. Set that schedule. Take those breaks. Take your lunch break. Nobody said just because you're working from home, you have to be glued to, to the computer 24 seven. You're either self-employed and have to self, make yourself take those breaks, or you're working for an organization and the same rules apply. I want you to carve out the space if you're deciding to work from home. Is that in your living room that I'm in right now? Is that in your dining room? Is that in at your kitchen table? I had an employee one time that uh, their office was in their garage. The only thing that I would say for, for anybody that's working at home, make sure you have great internet. Because believe me, it has not crossed it has not crossed my mind that during this session that we're talking to you all genuinely about how we can make lemon aid out of lemons, that God, what happened if my internet went down? So you have a backup plan. You know what I got as a backup plan? I'll show you. My cell phone is a hot spot. If for any reason right now that you've lost me, I would log on in a heartbeat as a hot spot. Have a plan A, have a plan B. That's what professionals do. And as a professional, we need to set some boundaries for our friends and families and neighbors because uh, you may live in an apartment, you may live in a subdivision. I don't know where you live. But sometimes we live with people who are retired. And, you know, if they see your car park at the driveway, they're like, oh, you're not working. Let me go knock on the door and see how you're doing. You need to set parameters of, we're living a little bit of uh, different times here, people, and I'm working out of the house, so I don't have time to chit chat because I'm working. And for your internal, your children, your spouses, anybody that lives with you, put a sticky note on the back of your computer. I'm at work, or if you're working in your garage, or your bedroom, your kitchen, have something. I don't care if it's a sock that you put up, that, and then you take the sock off and on, and they know that you're busy, but you need to set the parameters so you're not interrupted. And I got my two kitty cats upstairs in my bedroom locked up so they would not come crawling all around the desk here. You have to plan for the meeting that you're gonna have to be professional in what you're presenting. I hope that makes sense. And no matter what, if you own your own company, plan to start your own company, or you work for a company, they have um, technology that they use. Is it Skype? Is it Teams? Is it Zoom? Is it the go-to series? Whatever it is, learn it. Practice it with co-members. I can tell you for the, um, uh, national conference that we had at the beginning of June, 16 different sessions. We probably practiced with every single session at least three times to virtually hold their hand because many were nervous. They had not done it. And I told them, I said, I don't care what time of day it is or what day of the week it is. I will practice with you until you feel comfortable. And let me tell you, Kevin and I have practiced this about three times because you always want to come across as the professional that you are. So some rules that we do, and you know, you all can follow different rules, whether it's Skype or Teams or Zoom, uh, we use the green check mark. Green means I'm available, not on a call, not in a meeting. 
What you need to do is keep your schedule on your calendar so your fellow colleagues can go say, oh, oops, Betty and Kevin are giving a webinar between this time and this time today, like we're doing right now, so I bet you my bottom dollar that none of my staff are trying to get with me right now. But you know why I know that I know that they can't is because I turned off email, I turned off Skype, I turned off stuff. It's called proper planning. So that way you don't feel embarrassed when you're having a corporate call with a client. You have already anticipated what can happen. I'm gonna steal this from you, Kevin. So whether you're virtual or you're working in person, we coordinate those activities that we need to do. Is the end goal to make a sale? Is the end goal to work on a project? Whatever your role and responsibility at the company that you are, were, or want to work at, you need to coordinate what your tasks are. You need to anticipate anything that can go wrong. Because if you don't, it will. And then you need to verify those that you've asked to help you in making sure you have a successful call, event, et cetera. You need to verify that those things will happen. Because if you do not coordinate, anticipate, and verify, little old Murphy will come and bite you. And we all know who Murphy is. So I don't think I need to say any more about that. But maintain that professional mindset. Do you know a professional mindset can mean different things to anybody? A professional mindset may mean, I just got up first thing this morning and took a shower. It may mean, I took a shower and I know I've got to show my face and I had to do my hair and makeup. I might have shorts on, which I do. It may mean that I have a professional setting behind me. My computer does not allow Zoom to um, do that. You have to check with your um, director of IT. So that's why I got my pop up in the back. Um, but we also, we just need to make sure that we're serious about business. When you show up, do your job. I don't care if it's in a brick and mortar building that your employer is renting, leasing, owning, or whether it's in your kitchen, uh, dining room area. If you're an employee, do your job, show up. Network online. I don't have to be in the same room and shake your hand. I feel the energy of everybody on this uh, webinar right now, this Zoom meeting. We haven't lost hardly anybody. And I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm giving you suggestions of what many people do. So, uh, you know, use your social media. Use your Facebook, use your LinkedIn, use your Glassdoor, use your Indeed, your Jazz HR, your Career Builder. But the thing is, if you do have a job and you're responsible for talking to customers, communicating, developing a relationship, sometimes just pick up the email or the phone and call them and ask them how they are. Sometimes people just like to know that you just didn't want anything. How are you doing? How's things going? Are you still working from home? How's the kids going? How's the training going You know, with your kids? I bet you're going crazy trying to do your job and help your kids learn. I didn't ask them, I, I did not ask to try to sell a thing, but it developed that relationship and that bond. So that's what you need to do. You know what, that helps you with no matter what company you're at, it helps you strengthen the bond, the brand, excuse me, and the relationship. And I think people more or less these days were, were tired of the stuffed shirt and were more about I'm a real human being just like you are. I want to help you if you have a need. And it, and it makes us be more successful. Next slide, Mr. Smith. So I just summarized this. I just told you. So I'm, you know, it's the teacher in me because I, I, I do have a teaching degree. I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to show you what I told you to do. So, you know, get dressed. Don't work all day in your pajamas. Uh, believe me, you work all day in your pajamas, you're going to probably get in the habit of eating more than you should. Take pride in yourself. I'm not saying get dressed up in a suit. I'm just saying get dressed in something, you know, summer casual, if you will. Designate a workspace. I don't care if it's in your garage, your kitchen, your living room, I don't care. But have a space that the people that you're living with in your bubble know, don't touch my stuff. This is where I work. Make sure they know the hours. And make time for yourself. 
So take breaks. Go outside and get the mail like I do. That's one of my highlights of the day. I promise you, walking to the mailbox is really exciting. My husband's like, are you going to get the mail? I'm like, don't touch my mail. I'm going to the mailbox. Oh, watering my plants outside. So, you know, build those transitions in. And, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into, you know, what and all is in the news today, but we've got a lot of um, super sensitive things on the news. Try not to get sucked into it. Keep yourself informed, but don't keep it on all day because, you know, that's not healthy also. Do what you did before. Keep up with the news and move on. Communicate, communicate, communicate internally, externally, and socialize. You can use the tools like we're using right now, Zoom, or you can use Skype or Teams, whatever your tool of the day is. You can still talk to your cousins, your mama, your daddy, your friends, your colleagues. And just because I can't shake your hand doesn't mean you don't see me. And, and, and that makes a big difference because we can still share emotions with each other. and We can still see each other's faces. Next slide, please. Uh, you know, this is the mama in me talking. You know, get out of your pajamas, drink your water, your tea, go outside, check the mail, get some air, walk, um, you know, stretch, don't get fat, um, eat some nourishing, you know, meals, don't get in the habit of snacking all the time. Keep your professionalism, keep your reality of who you want to be as a person. Talk on the phone, talk on video. This one is important to me. Take a quiet moment with yourself. Whatever it means to you to reflect, pray, meditate. It's okay to sit down for five minutes with your eyes closed and just think about where you're at, where you want to be, and be thankful for what we have. Too many people get caught up on what I don't have. Think about the person that's worse than you and be grateful for what you have. And make sure you do take care of your body because you're important. You really are. You need to have a mental check on how you're feeling today. And if you get you know, stuck in the mud, you know, give yourself a mental little slap in the face and say, get over it. I've got, I've got, I'm, I'm grateful for a lot and let's move on. Next slide. Speaking of, if there's anybody out there that doesn't have a sense of humor, I plead of you not to click on any of these links. But when you're at home working, it's important to take a break. The lunch break, the go out to get the mail break, uh, the feel of sunshine on your face. I actually went out one time to get the mail in the rain on purpose because I wanted to feel the rain on my face. And that's a true story. So I put together some little funnies for COVID. I'm a big General Hospital fan, so my first one is Rick Springfield. Some of you probably don't know who he is, but all of these are little spoofs on COVID. And Jeff Dunham is a ventriloquist. He is so funny. And he's got some really funny ones where he's got his different little, you know, characters with the mask on. And then I put together some miscellaneous, miscellaneous, excuse me, spinoff songs. But please don't get on to me. Please don't write me and tell me you know, bad things, because I have forewarned you, if you don't like, if you don't have humor, don't look at it. If you looked at it, you looked at it at your own risk. But they really are funny. Next slide. It is with my sincere, heartfelt, no matter who you are, no matter what, if you're a spouse, active duty, uh, individual that's unemployed, a person looking for a new, a new career, a remote career, even if you're one of our partners, I can tell you education to me is one of the most important things that can shape and mold our future. It always has been. It's just do all of us want to be a part of it. It's the gift that we can give ourselves no matter what background we come from. And I do mean that sincerely. No matter where you come from, we can impact people's lives. Think about this. If you are a potential student, you have a job and you're thinking about changing your career, or even if you're an educator on this call, education is a gift that we give to ourselves, or it's an annuity that by giving it to ourselves, that we may have impacted someone's life that we never knew about. 
did my sister, brother, cousin, mama, daddy, friend, child, did they see how it impacted where I was able to go from an apartment to a home, go from a lease to a buy, achieve the goal that I wanted? You have no idea the impact that you can make by doing something for yourself by somebody around you that's watching you and saying, well, if they can do it, I can do it. So, and I will say, and I am saying self-serving, my organization wants to provide the real world employer with people like you on this call, real people with real jobs. And that's the real story. And we've been doing a lot of webinars lately, and I hope you found this one to be beneficial. I can't promise you a job. I can provide you the facts based on Bureau of Labor Statistics and other, uh, other um, websites that we've cited. I hope you take it to heart, and I hope in some way we've motivated you to be the next person that you want to be. And I want you to remember, and I am very passionate. I mean, I literally, I cry sometimes because I just want to help people help themselves. I want you to remember to be bold. Be willing to challenge the conventional wisdom. Don't settle for what it is. What do you want it to be? What worked in the past is no longer a reliable God because we're changing history right now. So think about it. And if you do have any questions, you got my email, you got Kevin's, you got our 800 number, you got our info. But I'm going to tell you, everybody that was on this presentation was important to me. I am now going to go look at the Q&A in the chat. And, but before I do, it's been very heartfelt for me to be on this presentation with you. So Kevin, let me go take a chance on Q&A here. Um, and for the protect, to protect the innocent, I will not say your name. Um, let's see here, I'm reading this for the first time. Another issue society will be facing is finding money to pay for these certifications. You got that right. I'll talk about that after I read the rest of it. If you are one of those degree individuals who has been furloughed or laid off due to COVID and are now trying to re-enter the workforce in one of these in-demand fields, it will almost be impossible getting financial aid to pay for these programs. Financial aid generally only pay for progression and not for someone who already has a degree but now needs certifications to change careers. I'm gonna address that one and I'm gonna ask Kevin if he wants to add anything to it. You have no idea how many people say the same thing. They call us up and they're like, I was working in XYZ job slash field. I've been furloughed, I'm laid off. I don't know what to do. I got bills to pay. Um, uh, can you help me? What we do and what any, any school would do, so I'm not trying to promote me, I'm just telling you what I know. We would find out what you did, what your background is, what you might be best suited for, and then we have multiple ways of payment. Um, we have a loan program that's spread out over you know, a year. We have a payment plan, put down some and pay based on your schedule. It's uh, customized for every individual. We have a layaway plan. And I remember, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm old. I remember when me and my mama used to go to Maxway, Super Dollar, if you will, pick your choice. And we would go pick out what we wanted. They'd hold it in the back room and mama would go and pay X amount down every weekend or every two weeks. And when we got it paid for, we got it. If, uh, you know, another way is, do you have someone important in your life? Think about this. When you're talking to, you know, about your life, your students, your future. If, if, if I was desperate and was living in a box, is there anyone, friend, family, otherwise, that I know that I could ask to assist me? What is your lifeline? I know not everyone has an answer, but we're getting to that point in our society right now that we need to figure out do we want to take our savings? Do we want to you know, take out a loan, a payout plan, a layaway plan? Do we want to go to a relative? Because think about this, people. 
if I'm sitting here in this chair today and I make no decision, if I'm sitting here in this chair tomorrow, I'm in the same place. I really went backwards because I didn't move forward. Do you want to move forward? Figure out a way to move forward. And I bet everybody, and I don't know everybody that's on this call. I haven't had, you know, once you're live, you can't go look at all that stuff. I don't know your backgrounds. There's somebody, there's some way. You've got us the contact to help you figure out that way if you'd like. So I'm gonna go look at the next one. I live in remote Alaska and work with military spouses to find employment. I find that many telework opportunities are not open to residents of Alaska. Any suggestions? Um, and Kevin, this is the second one. So I want, after this one, I will ask you to address both. I'm not quite sure why that would be in Alaska because we are a military spouse employment partner. As I said, that means we go out of our way to try to hire military spouses. So no matter what base they go, go to, as long as they can shut the lid on their computer, I don't care where they live in the world. As long as they're doing their job, I'm gonna be paying them a paycheck. So Kevin, would you like to address the first one about financial and the second one about Alaska, sir, before I move to the next? Right. Um, thank you. Um, I can't tell you, folks, how many times we get asked the question, can you tell me about this course and how can I get it paid for? And there's no break in the sentence. There's not even a comma. Why? Because people are financially stressed. I understand that. So if you're unemployed or underemployed, the first thing we try to do is try to refer those people to workforce investment counselors who have the money that will invest in that person, regardless if they've got a degree or not. If you're unemployed, you're unemployed. It doesn't matter what you study, okay? 50% of the people that ever graduate with a degree ever work in what they studied. Think about that. 50% that actually graduate from school ever work in what they studied, okay? So there's no guarantee in, that what you study is what you're gonna wind up putting bread on the table with, okay? Um, so we try to refer them to workforce counselors. If they're a military spouse, obviously, if they meet the prerequisites for my CAA, we wanna make sure that they've tapped that. There are some of our partners that tell military spouses, if you're unemployed, first, use every bit of state funding you can for workforce dollars first, and then tap your MyCAA fund. And in doing so, now you're talking about anywhere from maybe seven to $8,000 of total assistance in helping you get reskilled to get back into the job force. Um, like Betty said, loan programs are available, payment plans, layaway plans, I would say probably 85% of the people that we're helping with right now for education are under some type of tuition assistance from someone other than taking their credit card and plopping it down saying, I'm in, I'll pay for the whole thing right now. The second thing about remote in, in, in Alaska is that I would ask you to look and see who the largest employers are in Alaska realize that they've got employees all over the state and, and see what they use to have people telework, okay? Because of weather conditions alone, a lot of people aren't moving back and forth across the state. So there has to be a certain amount of tele, teleworking at all. One of the things you might wanna do is use my friend Google and say, tell me the, tell me the top telecommuting jobs in Alaska. You'd be amazed what Google will come up with on a spare moment and tell you, okay? Um, give, that, give that a try. Back to you, Betty. Betty, you're on mute, ma'am. I was on mute. I was, I was following remote work from home, political correctness of being on mute when you're not speaking. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, how does the EKG online class provide students with the practice needed for the job? Great question. Um, I can only speak for my organization. We do provide um, internship, externship, whatever the word of the day is. Um, and things are currently, you know, loosening up, but they're, they're not hard stop. But we can provide that program live online synchronous or online 
or in classroom when things come back to normal. But we still set that student up um, to have that hands-on practice um, at the facility. And we, and, um, we our organization, I'm sure many do other than us, that they have those affiliation agreements for those students um, uh, that want to get the hands-on experience. So I hope that answered that question. Uh, we're living through this world just like you all are and figuring it out one day at a time, but I assure you no student will be left behind. We may just all have to practice a little bit more patience. Um, and I'm sorry if my screen did not seem to be centered. I was trying to cover up the window in, in my living room with my little pop-up so it wouldn't glare on you guys. So doing the best I can here. Um, and as far as the hyperlinks, they will work when we send you the copy of the presentation um, and, the, and the PDF. They will work when we send it to you. So I appreciate that um, comment because that clarifies it for everyone. And um, got a person that says they're interested in the medical administration and billing and coding, uh, my pleasure. Please contact me privately afterwards. I will make sure that you are um, spoken to. We make sure that if it's an interest that you have, we make sure you, we set you up for success. Because I absolutely, at times, will turn students down because I say, you can't get there right now. I can, I, I can create a pathway for you but I'm not gonna sell you a class right now that I know you're not ready for. And I think that's what everyone should do realistically, you as a potential student, employee that wants to move to the next uh, journey in your life, you need to be realistic about what you're ready for. Let's see here. Oh, we asked that one. Um, Oh, will there be certificates emailed to participants of this seminar? Do you know that's the first time I've ever had that question on a webinar? Um, I'm very willing to entertain that because we, like I said, at the beginning of June, we had over 860, close to 900 people. And within two days, we mailed out certificates to 3,800 plus registration people to e email us out a certificate of um, participation. I don't have a problem with that. I'll just look and see who stayed on, how long, and all that. So, great question. I appreciate it. So, Kevin, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna peruse here just a second to see if I've answered everybody's statements or questions. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, here's one. Um, we have a current student that's enrolled in one of our programs, and for you know um, proprietary reasons, I'm not gonna say who it is or what the class is. Says. The information is exhausting. I'm doing self-study. What suggestions or guidance can you offer? I'm prepping to take the exam in two months. With research, you know, this career requires experience only. I'm going to tell you that if you need help, reach out. If um, you have questions that we can get on uh, with, because this is what you're taking, and I know who you are. Um, you're taking a self-paced online program. If you ask questions, we'll get you answers from a mentor. And uh, you're right, these certification classes, you know, we're not associate, and I'm not trying to do a pro train advertisement because many schools do the same thing that we do. If you're offering a course, a certificate, or certification program, it's not associate, undergraduate, graduate, PhD. I mean, it's not that. But continuing education is not a cakewalk either. You're wanting to change your life. You're wanting to impact your ability to, to gain your future. We don't sell classes, we sell futures. We invest in you and you invest in yourself. And I'll be happy to have a personal one-on-one -on -one with you and I know exactly who you are, we've talked before. Um, let's work together to get through this together because to be a professional, in any industry, whether it be medical, IT, business, sales, you want to be the best in the best because you don't want to be furloughed like the other 40 million people. So let's work together to make you be the best. I'll see if there's any other questions, Kevin. Um, while, you're, while you're doing that, Betty, let me just make one comment. Okay. Regardless, regardless what you're studying for, or what your certification you're trying to prepare for, I would advise you to do a couple things. One is 
make sure you've got a quiet place to study. You cannot study for a credential exam with HBO or Showtime going on in the background and the kids playing video games right there in front of you. That's just not gonna be conducive to studying for a national certification exam. Second of all, go back and look at quizzes and tests because all of those align with the terminal learning objectives that are focused on the critical task that is in a certification exam. If it's in a quiz, odds are you're gonna see something like it in the future on the certification exam, okay? Find someone who recently took the exam and ask them, what did you find easy? What did you find hard? The great question is, if you could go back today and had one more week to study for it, what would you have studied more? Listen to what they tell you because they've already been across the experience bridge before you and take that to heart. I can tell you, all through school, I found guys and gals that had been in classes for me. I wasn't trying to get the answers to the test. I'd say, okay, I'm studying for Professor so-and-so's class. This is what I'm studying. What do you want to tell me? Yes, that's all right. But he's always going to have a left, you know, out of left field qu question. And it usually comes from something that was only read, but never discussed in class. So don't forget to go back over the reading things that he said. Don't forget to look at your reading stuff because there's one, there'll be at least one question in there. Okay. Well, they didn't tell me what was on the exam, but they told me where to look and, 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 refocus that study time that I gave it. I hope that that's been helpful for you as well. Betty, back to you. Okay, Kevin, I was making sure I, I was not on mute. Um, uh, we did have one question that I answered privately, so I hope that person saw that. Um, our goal today is not to be, um, you know, we're not a staffing agency. Our goal today was to open up your mind that um, our society is changing. That's you know, not different to anybody on here, but you can learn to work from home or part-time from an office and part-time from home. We hope that you, we gave you some national statistics from the Bureau of Labor Statistics to give you a hint on you know, what's hot, what's not. And um, we're all in this together. And again, I say thank you so much for being on our webinar and we hope we were, um, of some help to you. And if you have any questions, you have this, you will be emailed this, and I thank you very much. Thanks folks, stay well.